Okay. Uh, yeah, so last night before, so let's finish up some practical dinam of the sukkah. Okay, so not the construction of the sukkah. That should be done by now. But um, as far as the mitzvah of eating in the sukkah, we learned tomorrow night, the first night of sukkah, you have an obligation to eat at least the kezayis of bread in the sukkah, even if it's pouring. Now, normally during sukkah, the dinner is like this. What you, you must, what you must halachically eat in the sukkah, when you eat it, you make a bracha leisheba sukkah. If it's something that halacha says you really don't must eat in the sukkah, but it's preferable to eat in the sukkah, then you don't make a leisheba sukkah. Okay? Now, what is considered something that you must eat in the sukkah, that therefore you would make a leisheba sukkah? So that would be, it's called a kibetza, two ounces of bread or cake. In other words, again, halachically, it's best not even to drink water out of a sukkah, okay? But technically, you can have a five-course meal. You can have fish and salad with chicken soup. You can have prime rib with, ma- with uh, potatoes and uh, other side dishes plus a nice ice cream for dessert, halachically, you couldn't make a leshe basukah eating that in the sukkah. Why? Because technically, you're not obligated to must eat that stuff in the sukkah because there's no bread and there's no cake. If you eat even bread and cake, it's only if you eat two ounces of cake, a double kezayis of cake or bread. So that's the only time, basically, practically speaking, is when you make the brach leishiv sukkah. We hold that even when you make havdalah in a sukkah, you make a leishiv sukkah. Even if you're not planning to eat later, definitely if you're planning to eat later anyway, but, but the bottom line is because havdalah is a mitzvah which establishes the wine to be what's called an establishment, a kvias, and therefore you'd be obligated to make havdalah in the sukkah. If you're obligated to make havdalah in the sukkah, then you have to go Make the bracha leisha basuka. On regular wine during the cholamayid. A regular wine during cholamayid, you don't make. Let's say you have a, a meal with the fish, meat, everything, no bread, no cake, and you're drinking a cup of wine because during cholamayid or every day of Yom Tov, you're supposed to drink a revias of wine. That would not demand a leisha basuka, and therefore you don't make a leisha basuka on it. But you say in the past if you establish a wine party. Yeah, if yeah, but that's not usually done in normal <laughs> circles. Established wine party, you know. Wine is more fattening than cake. Not fattening. Gluten-free. Oh, gluten-free. Um, the truth is, you don't, and a, and a cup of wine you don't make. It has to be kavias, shederich, um, but you don't make until it's proper, that that's what you're doing. You're having a wine party. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you don't make a leisha of a sukkah and a cup of wine. But Kiddush on Shabbos, where you can only have wine with Kiddush? Yeah, then, yeah, but you, then you're going to be eating your meal or you're going to be having mezainas. And then, because it's a mitzvah, you need to drink it in the sukkah, therefore you have to make a leisha of sukkah. Now, what happens if you leave the sukkah in the morning... Okay, eat breakfast in the sukkah, you wash, make a leisha of sukkah and everything, and then you're going to come back later to eat uh, lunch three hours later. Again, you're going to wash. So even though when you left in the morning, you knew that you're going to come back, but after two hours, you have to make a new leisha of sukkah anyway. Okay? So let's say you, you eat in the sukkah breakfast and you wash and have enough to make leisha basukkah then you're going to eat dinner in the sukkah even though you knew that you're going to come home and eat dinner if you're eating the cake or the bread then you need to make another leisha basukkah what happens if a person leaves the sukkah and he thought okay that's it you know I'm done for the day I'm done for the night and then a minute later he changes his mind and decides to have more cake uh, they brought out a nice, uh, you know, cream cake, uh, whatever, mousse or whatever, and you decide to want to eat in the sukkah. So because when you left the sukkah, your intention was not to come back, so immediately you need to make a new bracha. I'll give you a simple example. You finish eating sukkahs, you, you know, left the sukkah into the house, all of a sudden your bell rings, 
Your friend is here to Fabrain. Okay, let's go back into the sukkah. So now you're going back into the sukkah, even though you were there five minutes ago, but the fact that when you left, you didn't intend to, to have, uh, go back, to have the sukkah, to go back into the sukkah, you have to make a new leishim sukkah again, providing you're going to eat another two ounces of cake or, or bread or whatever it is. Now, what happens if you go from sukkah to sukkah? You ate in your sukkah, then you're going to go what's called sukkah hopping, you know? Pay a visit to a bunch of friends. Every sukkah you go to, even though when I left my sukkah, I know I'm going to my friend's sukkah. I'm going to the shul sukkah, then you're going home to your sukkah. Okay, let's say there's a kiddush in shul, you have enough cake to make a sukkah, and you know you're going home for lunch or dinner, whatever it is, yeah? So then the then is, if it's a different sukkah, you have to make a new bracha leishiba sukkah, Again, providing you're eating the amount that would demand the Leish sukkah, even though you knew beforehand that you're going to that house. Then if you go to another sukkah, again, another sukkah, you might get fat at the end of the whole day, but uh, you have to, every time you go to another sukkah, you need to make a new, yeah. you go to somebody's sukkah, to lunch, let's say, you stay there all the way until dinner, you make another Leish sukkah? You're sitting in the same sukkah? You're sitting in the same sukkah. No, then you know you're going to be there. It's the same sukkah. Yeah, no. You go inside? Huh? You go inside for an hour or two? Again, if you go inside and you know you're coming back and it's less than two hours, less than two, the Alter Rebbe says, show us time, an hour or two. So so after two hours, you'd have to make a new Lashem HaSukkah. So it doesn't matter. No. The first night, they must eat challah, even though they can get oat. I know, there's gluten-free matzah, there's gluten-free bread also made from oats. I don't know, a lot of people told me, a lot of people make their own, people that are gluten-free, a lot of people make their own challah and bread from oats. Not all oats is gluten-free, I think. If it's part of it, whatever. They're, they're gluten-free. So then, it's still mezenis, it's still hamaitzi, because it's made from oats. But if you have, um, let's say, cake, a pesach they could cake. Okay, made from potato starch. That shahakal, you don't make a leshe even if you eat uh, 30 cakes. You know, you can't make a leshe it's not a mezainus. So if it's from the five grains, which is wheat, barley, oats, rye, and spelt, so then that's a mezainus in our mate. So then you'd have to make a leshe If you have uh, cornbread, um, quinoa, rye, no, rye is one of the seven mean? What do you see? Rye is. Rice, rice, rice. Oh, rice, rice bread. You know, any of those types of things. Uh, then you'd have to, uh, zucchini bread. You know, it's still shahakal. It's not the uh, meitz, even though it's called bread. So then you'd have to make a new zbrach. Okay, if you go to somebody else's sukkah, every time. Now, what happens? You're in the middle of the sukkah, you're eating, you were supposed to make a leisha basukkah, and you didn't. You forgot. You're in the middle of eating. You remind yourself, oh my God, I didn't make a leish So you make a leish then. Even if you finished eating, as long as you didn't go back into the house to stay, so to speak, you can still make a leish But it says in Allah, you should spend some more time uh, in the sukkah. You don't have to eat, but just spend a little bit more time uh, to stay in the sukkah to be able to make the uh, leish of Okay, uh, next. What? Another thing is that according to our custom, the two days of, of sukkahs, when you make a mason, you dip the chal into honey. Like we did Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur, Mitzvah Yom Kippur. So the first two days of sukkahs and the Shonah we also dip it into uh, honey. You leave salt on the table. What the Rebbe used to do, anytime the Rebbe used honey, he took the first bite with honey, and then he took a second piece of bread and dipped it into salt. How interesting, and we, at least we saw by Fabreng, is whenever the Rebbe washed and ate bread, every piece of bread he took, he dipped three times into salt. Like when he ate uh, a number of pieces of bread. Ten times? Or did he get, he got no, one, one to three. Bread, three times. Ten. Oh, just once? No! Saying, Every yeah, time he ate piece. different pieces of bread, he would dip it into, into the salt. Yeah. But, but that again, that's not... Uh,
But I, so unofficially, our custom is the first piece you put into honey, honey, and the second piece you put into bread. I mean, bread, 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 put into salt, and then you eat it that way. Okay. Now, as far as uh, benching mulav and esrig, the the first day of Sukkot this year it's not Shabbos, so we get up early to bench. Uh, the, the first day of Sukkot is the biblical mitzvah of Sukkot. The Torah says of lulav and esrig. I mean. The mitzvah of Sukkah, of, of Lula and Esrik is only the first day Yom Tif. That's the biblical mitzvah. The rest seven days is only rabbinic. So let's say when Sukkah falls out on Shabbos, Shabbos and Sunday, there's no biblical mitzvah of Lula. Because Shabbos you don't do it. And then you don't have a biblical mitzvah of Lula. But still, it doesn't matter. Rabbinic mitzvahs are also pretty good. First day is biblical. No. Because of the carrying. Because of the carrying. So the Gemara asks, how can the rabbis undo, uproot the biblical mitzvah? So the Gemara answers in a few places in Shas that the Chachamim were given the biblical authority to tell you not to do a positive mitzvah. The rabbis do not have the ability to tell you transgress a negative mitzvah. I mean, the rabbis can't tell you, okay, today you can eat pig. That they don't have an ability to do. The chachamim, yesh koyach biyad chachamim, lakar dover minatayda b'sheva altai, so the Gemara says. Uh, the rabbis were given the biblical power to say, don't do a mitzvah. The Torah says, yes, the rabbis say, you don't, you don't have to do it. Like Shefer, the only practical things are Shefer and Lulu. That when they fall out on Shabbos, we don't do uh, the mitzvah of Lulu, we don't do the mitzvah of Shefer. So therefore, now, so therefore the first day of Lulu, you're supposed to get up early, early, early. In fact, I believe Yitzchak Abadishiv used to be up a whole night. The night of Sukkot, he is actually literally up a whole night and he kept constantly checking when the light is coming. He was so excited about doing the mitzvah uh, of Lulav, he would literally wait up the whole night, the first night of Sukkot, to wait when he has opportunity. By the way, he did the same thing the last night of Sukkot, after Sukkot's Teda. He didn't put on tefillin for nine days. He would wait up a whole night to get the first possible opportunity to put on tefillin. And then he would fall asleep in the middle. No, he didn't fall asleep. These are tzaddikim, not me and you. You and I. So, uh, so now, when you, the best place to do Lulav and Esrig is in the Sukkah. The best time to bench Lulav and Esrig, we said, is right before Halal. But it says in Hatshukun Aruch, we don't want people to leave Shul, to go to the Sukkah, to bench Halal, because people are going to think that they're going home already, you know, without finishing Davani. So therefore, what do you do, Lepel? So the best thing to do is, if, if you have a Sukkah, is to make the bracha in the sukkah before davening. If you don't have a sukkah at all, not in the shul, not in your house, then the real, the best time to do the bracha is in shul right before uh, lula, the right before halal. What? Is there a preference for your own sukkah? No, it doesn't matter. Any sukkah. You do it after the kotah shachar to do it. Yeah, if you do, you have to do Birchat Shacha first. Then, Many people have a minute, they don't eat. Some people don't even drink before benching Lulav. What? Well, people who go to Mikveh, should they go to Mikveh first before they bench Lulav? If they're going to Mikveh, it would be worthwhile go to Mikveh first, and then after Mikveh, you bench Lulav. Probably do the, what? Birchat Shacha, then you do the Lulav. Yeah. No, then you enter the Sukkah, and then you do the... Yeah. Now, you do, do Brachis, you go into the Sukkah, bench Lulav, and Esrig. Have you your cup of coffee Sunday. with some cake if you want. Then you come to Sunday. Then you come to show. How early and how late can you the, the preferable time is any time after between sunrise and sundown. But people that have to go to work, so halachically you could do it for Nalesa Shacha, Amuda Shacha, which you can figure approximately 72 minutes before sunrise. That's for every day or just the first day? Every day. Like every day. And then if you sleep in the sukkah, you go out of the sukkah and you go... No, you can sleep in the sukkah and uh, then bench Lula. How do you bench Lula? Yeah, I'm going to go through it in one second. Um, after sundown. After sundown, you have to do it without a bracha. 
Okay, now, when you bench Lulav and Esri, wherever you're doing it, you face east. Okay? Our, I'm telling you the way our custom is. You face east, you put your feet together. Like Shimon Esri. If you're right-handed, you pick up the Lulav in your right hand. If you're left-handed, you're left-handed. If you're right-handed, you pick it up in your right hand. The Lulav. And you make the bracha baruch atah Hashem lokel mochel mashik kishanu be mitzvahs of mitzvahnu al netilas lulav. Without that, the first day you also have to make shechion. So when you make the bracha on netilas lulav, you don't you don't pick up the lulav as we get. When you start shechionu, you start baruch atah the second bracha, then you take the as in your left hand. When you finish the bracha shechionu v'kimanu v'giyanu l'zman azeh, then you put it together. That's how you do the mitzvah. Now, our custom is also to do what's called the nanuim, the shakes, you know, the, in each direction. So, our, there's a lot of different customs. Our custom is when you're facing east, it's very simple the way we do it. Right, left, center, up, down, back. First east. No, you're facing east, so you go right. But no, but first you face east. You face east. And then you shake first to the right, which is north. Then to the left, which is south. Then straight ahead, which is west. Then up and down, and then back. No, I'm sorry. North, south, east. Right. Up, down, west. Right. Oh, it's south. What? When you're facing east, it's first south. south. When you face... Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm because I'm no, no. picturing that the show with the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you right. go, when you're standing east, when you go to the right, you're going south. Right. I should have faced this. They have to, they have to touch each other. What? The Lord and Essex should touch. Okay. Maga chins may zamei mechavei v'mayin kim shivla agal teir abuchanan mekashim ed. Not the bachos that's so big. Hebel hamter mishnah madi nerecha 